I'm Victoria. I'm Pamela. And I'm Kate. And today we're dishing with you from Room Barrows, located at 3345 14th Street Northwest in Columbia Heights. We're here with jazz artist Mar Marcus Johnson. Marcus, where does your inspiration come from? Wow. Uh, just every day waking up. Um, I guess one of my most inspirational people in my life is my mom. When I was 17, she had a stroke. And uh, our entire family's life changed. But she didn't die. She fought through it. They gave her two weeks to live. And that was about 20 years ago. So um, I hope I didn't give away my age right there. No, I'm just playing. But anyway. yeah, you're, you're 28. <laughs> 20. 20. <laughs> you're 20. <laughs> Somewhere around there. So, um, you know, seeing determination, uh, I'm actually reading a book right now, The Richest Man in Babylon, mm -hmm. and it really talks about determination. And I get that from her and my sister. I mean, I'm proud of her. She just graduated from med school. One of us went to law school. Three of us went to uh, med school. Uh, two of us went to law school. So. A family of overachie overachievers. No, we were, we were just, uh, we were disciplined well. How about yeah. that? And it's a family of music makers, too, I believe. Yes. You have some other music makers in your family. I, again, I have to go back to my mother, who is, uh, was a classical pianist. And I used to sit back, and uh, actually, I used to lay down on the carpet and roll around with my older sister, and we'd listen to my mom play. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was just one of the highlights of, of the week when she came in, but that's how she relaxed. And uh, it's amazing to see the, the therapeutic aspects mm -hmm. of performance as well as music, you know, uh, to listening and how it can take you to another place. I've had headaches many a days and sat down and played. And uh, it's like a, a Tylenol, extra strength. Well, if I were to play, people around me would probably get a headache. <laughs> that's me and singing. No, see, that's me and singing. Everybody's like, are you gonna sing tonight? And, no. So you, you never sing. You, you're completely, completely I don't even try to sing in the shower. That's how bad my voice is. Now, you know, that's why I think it comes out here. I actually hum when I play because it, it allows me to mm -hmm. transform the piano, which is a percussive instrument, into more of a woodwind kind of uh, expressive instrument. Well, you've told us what playing does for you. What do you hope that your music does for your listeners? Well, the first thing I hope it does is, like, there's this thing. And if your neck has to go like this. So, like a turkey? Yeah, okay. you know, it's it, we call it the neck factor. So, if your right. neck is not moving back and forth, then I have failed, number one. Um, but the main thing is, you know, making, uh, I call it creating the oral canvas of a life. I mean, that's really all we do is say, hey, look, here's something for you today. Mm -hmm. Here's another offering for you tomorrow. Maybe I help you get to work. Maybe I help you get up in the morning. Right. You know, maybe I help you get, you know, through the work day, which is kind of crazy, or get home or to cook. And um, it, it's, I, I never bring it. I always need to bring it to these interviews. But my most prized possession musically, I was performing at the first Silver Spring Jazz Festival. And a young lady walked up to me with a piece of paper. Mm -hmm. And I had talked about some of the things I had gone through in life. And again, being determined to make it through. And she wrote me a letter that said, you know, I woke up this morning suicidal and I'll go to sleep tonight happy to be alive. And I mean, for wow. me... To know that you were able to basically save a life. And I'm just an instrument because all I do is get up every day and kind of go, God kind of, you know, puts me around. How about this obstacle? Can you make it? And then, you know, after a while you're like, you know. <laughs> well, that's, all that. that's a pretty serious story. Now I gotta take it to a little bit lighter side. Uh oh. So, how many CDs? Fourteen. And how many of them have been on the Billboard's contemporary jazz charts, top hits, songs? That would be nine of them. No, I'm just playing. Nine, <laughs> nine, nine, nine of them. That's amazing. And this That's next incredible. one, you've got one coming out, so that one's gonna do better than all the rest of them, right? Yeah, we're really excited about it. Definitely. So I want you to go ahead right now and say it's going to do the best that any of them have ever done. You heard it here first. All right, we do it exactly. <laughs> it's going to be the best and do better than any of the others. You know, we're what all going to do this to it. Next factor. I think that's so cool that you 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 grew up here. You you are you represent um, the elite as far as musicians and artists uh, from Washington D.C. and you stay here and you perform here. What do you see as far as the the changing? Um, uh, that landscape of artists from D.C.? I think D.C. artists are becoming, they're starting to understand that there's more t than just doing this. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of guys, you know, for the longest, and musicians in general, have focused so much on this talent right. that they've forgotten about this talent. And then they've forgotten that when you 
when you make this your business, it's not about really us. It's, it's about the people out there. Okay. And do you make them get up and dance? Do you make them smile? Do you, do you make them want to make right and left turns and decide between literally toilet paper and toothpaste or your record? Because in, yeah. in economic mm -hmm. times like this, I mean, that's right. what you're deciding between. And it's true macroeconomics, you know? Hey, and it's, uh, it, I, I just think now we're starting to get along and, and get back to the basics of, we're in this together, right. let's get it to the consumer the best way we can, figure out new and creative ways to distribute the music. Right. And um, so, I'm excited. So it's not just about per, um, creating music, it's the business aspect of it is so important and so vital as well. I would say that 80% of what I do is um, actually business. Mm -hmm. And the, the fun 10% of it is, you know, actually performing. And then there's the not so fun other stuff that just comes and that's getting through it. Right. But I, I mean, you know, from creating a marketing plan to developing just the the background of what we want to do to managing a social networking team to uh, I mean and now the market is and I'm gonna sound nerdy for a second but it's so fragmented right. that you have to figure out how to like put it all back together but okay Pamela mentioned that you're here and you're here in DC mm -hmm. and you've got to be here in DC for a reason I mean let's talk about Duke Ellington mm -hmm. okay Duke Ellington Jazz Festival Duke Ellington High School mm -hmm. School for the Arts jazz jazz is here. It's DC. Is that why you chose to be here? Well, you know, that's one of the reasons why I chose to be here. There's a lot of talent that comes out of Duke Ellington. I love what uh, Charlie Fishman is doing with the Duke Ellington Jazz Festival. Um, actually, at Duke Ellington, my company, we just built a school, I mean, built a studio at the school for, to help kids with life skills and achievement motivation and uh, stay out of, uh, for a nonviolence movement. But really, the reason I'm here is because I think LA is LA and New York is kind of coming down. I mean, LA, when I go out there, I can get things done pretty quickly, but it's like dying. DC's hot. Yes, it is. I mean, yeah. and, and you know, it's, it's time mm -hmm. for everybody to recognize uh, when I did a funding deal with uh, Bob Johnson for our right. studio and stuff, right. you know, he's like, do, you, do, do we need a, an LA office? I'm like, nah. Do we need a uh, New York office? Like, nah. If we just take our time and do it here, mm -hmm. then we can be the big fish mm -hmm. in the nation's capital. Right. DC is hot, and now with President Obama and change and disruption, I mean, the whole world is going through this thing, which gives everybody, I mean, this is where the new millionaires and billionaires are gonna be made. And I tell people, I am a billionaire, I'm just waiting for my money to catch up. <laughs> Aren't we all? We know, Marcus, Victoria has a question she's been dying to ask you. How did you get your first keyboard? My first keyboard <laughs> is compliments of the Maryland Pick 3 Lottery. <laughs> This that, is a great story. I love, I love this story. So I had to, I had, uh, I wanted to be, look, if you grew up in D.C., especially in the 80s and 90s, you wanted to be in a go-go band. And I had some friends, and we were going to have the all-time best go-go band in, <laughs> in the ninth grade. And um, I did not have a keyboard, and I could not play. And I was like, but I need my keyboard. I was, I could have been labeled a brat back in the day. So I talked to my mom. It's like, ah, oh, no. Mom's like, no. And then that night, my stepfather played the pick three and bought my first professional keyboard up in Wheaton at Chuck Levin's Music. And I've been buying all of my stuff there ever since. <laughs> that is so great. And, um, Way to keep it local. Yeah. That's, it, it's, it's that, it, the story is awesome. And it shows faith mm -hmm. because I could not play a lick. And every time I get the chance for them to come to my concerts, I let everybody know that this is what you have to do with kids. You have to give them something to strive for and then empower them. You give them that power to say, I know that you can accomplish anything. Do you want to do this? Do it. Marcus, we're out of time, but right. we appreciate you sharing your story. And thank you for creating a jazz movement for the people. Poetically the justified. <laughs> yes. Buy the new CD, listen to it. We know we will be. Thank you for joining us this time right here on The District Dish. Yeah.